Here's a common situation. You have a piano piece that you've been working on. You're playing it pretty well, except there are a few rough spots that you just can't polish. It's pretty frustrating, isn't it? My students and I have the same problem. It's just part of being a pianist or any musician, really. But today, I'm going to show you how to polish those rough spots once and for all. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Welcome to my piano studio. When a rough spot just won't polish up for me or my students, even after lots of practice, then I know it's time to take a good look at how it's being practiced. If the practice routine doesn't include lots of repetitions, and those repetitions aren't perfect, then the routine itself needs an update. And that update needs to include enough perfect repetitions in order to establish dependable muscle memory. Muscle memory. You may not be familiar with the term, but we use muscle memory all the time. We use it when we drive a car or a golf ball, work in the kitchen, or find a light switch in our home. The motor skills we use to perform these tasks were practiced until they became automatic. And that's the same thing we need to do in order to polish rough spots. We need to practice effectively in order to establish dependable muscle memory. So let's see how this works at the piano. I'll demonstrate using a few measures from the first movement of Clementi Sonatina Opus 36, number one. I'll play the first section to find a rough passage that needs some practice. If you don't have this score in your library, there's a link below to download this section so you can follow along. the rough passage that I'll be practicing today. It starts with the pickup notes to measure 7 and ends at the beginning of measure 8. The first thing I'm going to do is to pull out this passage. We have to break apart the rough spots into pieces and then put them back together again perfectly. Because effective practice is all about finding patterns, I'm looking for a pattern in this passage. And guess what? I found one. In my right hand, it's a pattern of thirds, and that will help a lot. I'm going to block these thirds, meaning that I'll play them at the same time. This helps me see the pattern more clearly. Now let me show you some practice techniques based on repetition. And remember why we're subjecting ourselves and others to these annoying repetitions. We need to build muscle memory. The first technique is based solely on repetition, intense repetition. I'm going to add this first technique to the block thirds that I just showed you. I'll repeat each block third First twice, then three times, then four times, then back to three, two, and one. I find that this kind of repetition slows down my hands so I can think before I play. Then I'm able to set the pattern in my eyes, my memory, and my muscles. Unfortunately, this could sound like a jackhammer. First two, three, four. Three. 
Now backwards, three, two, one. One. And then as written. The second technique is based on long and short rhythms. I start with a long note and emphasize the length of each note. Real long, then real short, repeating a few times. You can speed up if you like. Now I'll switch from long short to short long. It may not end rhythmically, but that's okay. I will also repeat these a few times, short long. The third and final technique is really just a test to make sure there has been improvement in the way I play this passage. I will repeat the passage until I could play it perfectly three times in a row. If I make a mistake, I'll start over. And if I keep making mistakes, I have to change something if I expect a different result. I start with slowing down. Why three times? Well, because in over 40 years of teaching piano students, I've found that three is the magic number. If you could play something three times in a row perfectly, then you've probably got it and could go on to practice in your next rough spot. That's one. That's none. And that's one. That's two, and the pressure's on. Pay attention. And that's three perfect in a row. So now that I've played the passage perfectly, I'm going to put it back into context. I'll add a measure or so before and after, and then test it again. One. Two. Again, the pressure's on. Pay attention. If I pass the test, which I did, I'm finished with that passage for today, but I would continue to review it the same way for at least a few days, usually until I can play it perfectly on my first try. Now on to my left hand. I'm going to use a shortened version of what I just showed you because there really isn't a helpful pattern here. We'll jackhammer the rough spot, apply the long and short rhythms, then test for perfection. Three, two, one. One, and that's as written. And then long, short rhythms. Short, long. Perfect, three times in a row. final step is to put my hands together. If I need to, I can slow down and also divide the passage into smaller portions. Then I will test the passage for perfection, put it back into context, and test again.
ready to put it into context, and here we go. We could speed up if we feel pretty confident. Let's go over what we've learned. Practicing is made up of perfect repetitions of rough spots. It's important to pull rough spots out of context in digestible portions. Find patterns if possible, and then block them. Jackhammer the rough spot into muscle memory. Use long and short rhythms to smooth out the passage. Test for perfection by playing perfectly three times in a row. Insert back into context and test again. Review for the next few days. I hope this video will help you smooth out your rough spots. We talked about several different techniques like finding patterns, blocking, jackhammering, using long and short rhythms, and testing for perfection. Try these practice techniques on the pieces you're working on. Then let me know how it works in the comments below. If you need additional techniques to smooth out a rough spot, you can also try applying different articulations like staccatos and two note slurs and accents. These practice techniques and others are covered in some of my other videos. Just remember, only perfect practice makes perfect performing. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, click subscribe and check out some of my other videos on YouTube and my website. You can also contact me to schedule live online piano lessons. Until then, keep on practicing.